It's always uh, a very um, stressful experience getting these uh, plays together, right? The, uh, the children's service and everything. And um, there are always some technical difficulties, as you may have seen as well. But I think you get a real sense of what the purpose of children's ministry is all about. So, who is God? This is what we're really trying to convey to the children here. So, uh, I wanted to put together a video and ask all the kids in children's ministry, what do you think God is? Who is God? But I didn't get a chance to do that. So, I want to ask some of the kids now, who is God? Who do you think God is? Yes. God is a spirit that created us and he loves all beings and um, he created us because he wanted to love and receive love. So, yes. There you go. Look at that Marco. Marco. You did a great job on the, the, the ukulele. That was a late addition to the program. Who do you think God is? Who's God? The person who created the world. There you go. The person who created the world. Anybody else like to offer some, volunteer some views on God? Any of the children here? They all disappeared. Yes, hurry on. Loud voice. Loving figure, always there around us and helping us in any way you can. That's pretty good. Thank you. So, in each of the performances that we had today, there was a general theme. It's all about God. Who is God? And how do we get to know God? And that's what we're here for. That's why we come to church. It's to learn about God. And the, uh, the play that we did, The Conversion of Saul, shows a very powerful experience that he had. Now Saul was not an atheist, he actually believed in God, but Jesus came to him and he turned his focus. And he became a person who was fervently following Jesus. And he became Paul, who was the champion of the church at that time. He had a very powerful experience, a spiritual experience at that time. Has anybody else had that kind of experience? Has anybody here been an atheist before? Has anybody ever thought, there is no God? God doesn't exist? Yes. You too, Greg? Yeah. Many of our uh, friends from the former Soviet Union had that experience. They were raised in an atheist culture. They were not taught about the existence of God, or they were taught that God does not exist, that He's a figment of your imagination, that God was invented by man. So that's a very big question. Did God create man, or did man create God? For me, personally, this is the biggest question. From this, everything else flows. All other ideology, all other uh, ideas, moral principles, philosophies in life. And we have to answer that question ourselves. Each person has to answer it themselves. Do you believe in God? Do you believe God created you? created this universe, or do you believe that man just invented God to try and explain things that they don't understand? I came to that point in my life when I was about 19 years old, and uh, I was raised in a Catholic family, and I was taught a lot about God, but at some point I had to decide, do I believe this or not? Who is this God? So I went out and I challenged God went out on the beach and said, I have to find an answer to this. I have to know, does God exist or not? So I, I borrowed my parents' car and I said, I'm going away for a week. And my 
parents say, are you crazy? There's no way at 19 years of age I'm going to let you take the car for a week. Say, so, okay, three days. <laughs> no! All right, I'll just go overnight, okay? So I finally got permission to go away overnight. And I drove to this beach out in the middle of nowhere in Australia, a 40 mile long beach. And I parked the car, went into the beach, and I took my uh, tent and my sleeping bag, and I walked along the beach all day. And I camped overnight on the beach, and I sat there at night meditating and praying and trying to understand who is this God? <coughs> like a crazy man, like a hermit, you know. And I was sitting there on the beach, and it's a deserted beach, there's nobody around except for occasionally somebody in a dune buggy had come racing past and I would think, boy, I'm going to get killed here. <laughs> but I was yelling out, I was sitting on the beach and I was like, God, talk to me! <laughs> Where are you? I was waiting for Saul. He experienced like Saul. <laughs> Saul was like, he had an earthquake, he went blind. You know, it's like, yeah, of course God exists, right? God is real. Or Moses, a burning bush. Give me a burning bush. Anybody ever have a burning bush here? Anybody get struck by an earthquake or struck blind? God is not really like that so often, right? God is usually very quiet. God speaks. So after all night praying on the beach, I woke up in the next morning and God still hadn't talked to me. And I was like, God, if you don't talk to me, I'm going to give up on you. I'm not going to believe in you anymore. He's threatening. And then God said nothing. <laughs> it was just silence. <laughs> and I was a bit disappointed. Packed up all my stuff. And I started trudging back down to the beach. And I got about halfway down the beach, and I stopped to have a little rest and a snack, and I sat on the beach as I was looking out at the waves coming in on the sand. And as the waves came in, they were like, really quiet, and I was like, just hitting the sand, quiet, and I thought, maybe that's the kind of God, that's God's voice. God is speaking to me in those waves. Don't worry. Shh. I'm here. Shh. Be at peace. And so I decided at that point, okay, God, even if you don't exist, I'm not going to stop believing you. Because when I look around at the world and I look at the people who don't believe in God, the people that I know, they have no hope. They're a miserable bunch. They're angry, they're frustrated. And they go around with their heads down and these angry scowls on their face all the time. And I don't want to be like that. I want to live with hope. I want to live with love. So I decided I wasn't going to stop believing in God. I was going to keep going. And then, about three months later, is when I met the church. And then God really spoke to me. I went to those divine principle lectures and it's like the whole world opened up. And for the first time I was like... God's voice and God's love filled my heart and filled my life. So it took a little time for God to come through, but He did in the end. So, and I think everybody needs to have that experience, no matter what age you are, no matter how young you are. But we need to teach about God too, because we need to give the foundation for people to understand who is this God. We go to school. We have these wonderful universities and public schools, but they don't teach about God. That's why we come to church here every Sunday. That's why we bring our children to Sunday school so that they can learn about God. And that's what we're doing here, teaching these children every day. And for that, I am really grateful to all of the assistants and the teachers who have helped me throughout the year. Uh, many of them are actually my former students. They've been through the Sunday school program themselves. I remember some of them when they were just, you know, like, this big, like my own daughter, you know. <laughs> have gone through the whole program, and uh, they have been a wonderful help to me and a support, and if I ever feel discouraged, I just think of them, 
and I feel hope again. I feel like, yes, something here that we're doing right. So, I want to encourage everybody here to find your own relationship with God. And it's not a one-time thing. You have to do it over and over again. There are times in the last you know, 30 years when I have started to doubt. Maybe this God doesn't really exist, and then I have to go deep again. I have to go deep and challenge God and say, I want to know, are you real or not? And you have to find that relationship. So however you do it, I encourage you all in this coming week to go and find time to find that relationship with God once more. But now I'd like to invite all my teachers to come up here and I'd like to present them with a little thank you for all of their hard work through the year. So if they could all come down front here, let's give them a 